Hola, buenas tardes a todos. En primer lugar. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the Basque government and the VET uh, department for inviting us to participate. Uh, thank you for organizing this event. And uh, I would like to, first of all, explain uh, why we're here and how we get in contact with the VET in the Basque country. And it's the first time that this happens to us. We are a sustainable fashion company. We're quite a, uh, we're considered to be pioneers, and uh, we are uh, an SME. But we've uh, developed some uh, pioneering elements, which allow us to be in different forums for fashion, but also about uh, marine uh, waste, uh, waste in general terms, and entrepreneurship. And we uh, always thought about uh, how. We need to have training. Our customers need to be trained. Not that they're only critical through social networks, but they're also critical when they decide on a product and uh, pay with their own money, which is one of our biggest challenges. And also, we wanted to be more transparent. And in our daily work, we received a call and a, some calls from a BET center in. Uh, um, Vizcaya in Spain, uh, they, it was a catering uh, a school, and they invited us to participate in a uh, talk on our end of the year um, a meeting of the VT students in the catering school in Galdacano. And we were quite surprised because this is one not one of the places that contacts us, but we were uh, very lucky to be able to see the work that they were doing. In theory, we were there to inspire and teach, but in fact, what we brought back to Madrid was uh, much more because uh, we have to uh, take into account how you can find solutions through your students and your uh, um, plans. Throughout the whole year, they had been working on a circular economy, and the most interesting thing that they've done was to be uh, uh, self-critic about their daily life. What are we going to do with uh, uh, the oil? What kind of uh, plastics uh, do we uh, provide in our restaurant services? So it, this might be uh, common sense, but in fact, uh, circular economy is common sense. But probably our parents and grandparents, like uh, Marijosa said, just called it a day-to-day -day, uh, economy or a home uh, economy. Uh, so what I want to share today, I'm going to get a timer there. Yes, perfect. Thank you. So. That is what I want to explain, the capacity that we have through training and creation of awareness to change any kind of business and to be able to be uh, sustainable. Today I will be speaking about fashion because that's what we uh, work on, but this is a concept that can be brought to any uh, industry or to our own homes. If we all uh, look towards ourselves, if we don't look at our iPhones and smartphones and other devices, if you look at yourself, you're all dressed, yes. Me gustaría que pensarais en lo que lleváis. I'd like you to think for a minute about what you're wearing. How much of what you're wearing is natural fiber and how much is synthetic? I'd imagine that 80% of you are wearing synthetic fibers. How old is what you're wearing? I mean, how long lasting is it? Is it something that has been in your wardrobe for a while, a year, a month, or, or a life? Is it something that you've inherited or did you buy it at a second-hand shop or did somebody um, close to you give it to you? You're proud of it? Do you know how... It was made. You know how many times you'd have to. It's travelled around the world. What about the raw material? And it's a reflection that we ought to do with the world of fashion. And we could do it the same way with the food that we eat, or with our digital gadgets, with everything. And that allows us to be self-critical. And I think this is what we need to get across to society if we want society to change. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Echo Alf. I'm doing you a lot of work. I'd ask you to look at your clothes and look at the screen. But anyway, how many of you know about EcoAlf before reading this conference's program? Not bad. Quite a few of you. That allows me to tell everybody else. And uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about who we are, how we go about our work, and just a very, very little bit 
about the marine uh, waste project that we're working on. Echo Elf. How was it? How did it come about? Well, there were two ideas mainly. It didn't start out as a sustainable uh, brand of clothes. Our first uh, clothes collection didn't come about until 2012. But the first thing that made us think was that the fashion is the second highest polluting industry in the world. Once again, we looked at ourselves, at our wardrobes, the T-shirt that we still haven't worn, um, um, what's going on with all of this? We need to have in our minds that the fashion industry in glo globally is the second highest polluting industry in the world. And secondly, there are many things that are out there for other people that are just waste and rubbish. But maybe they could be become raw materials, high quality raw materials for us. Because one of the things that we find is that where others see rubbish, we see high quality raw materials. At least that's the way we go about things. So there were mm, nylon fishing nets, um, uh, plastic PET bottles, pet bottles that have that are made out of the same material of poly as polyester. Actually, at the end of the day, so we thought, well, why don't we do something a bit different? Why don't we find a, a fashion, a different kind of fashion, and become a fashion company? So that was our challenge. We decided to use as a few uh, natural resources as possible. And how do we go about that? Well, we decided we were going to create the first generation of recycled products with the same quality and design as the best non-recycled ones. So everything looks nice on the PowerPoint, but in theory, but that is not as easy as it looks. Because when you start thinking about recycling, when you think about sustainable clothes, you get this sort of idea of something that's homemade you know, something that your granny made, with your jumper that your granny knitted. And we didn't want that. We wanted our designs to be able to compete uh, on an equal footing with other fashion brands. It was aimed at being fashion, not just sustainable, but fashion as well. We didn't want it to look all sort of handmade, and, I'm, and I have full respect for handmade garments, but we wanted to be able to compete with fashion houses because we feel that this is the change that our sector needs. So we saw that we were facing up a reality, which was that there was no recycled fabrics of the quality that we wanted, and we're still working on that. We wanted to make everything out of recycled materials, but sometimes we want good quality, good finish that you find as attractive as any other. Somebody that goes to our shop or goes to our website doesn't say, yeah, okay, all very fun and dandy, but a bit hippie, isn't it? No, we don't want that. We wanted to avoid that. So we started working on with recycled materials, and we're still working with recycled materials. We're still innovating and increasing the recyclability of the products that we work with. We work with pet plastic bottles. That's all very developed. Polyester. We use discarded fishing nets and post-industrial nylon with the old tires, where we, where we can make flip-flops from that post-consumer coffee that can give natural properties to a fiber and of course post-industrial cotton and wool. And here's some just quick examples of things that we make and how we, well, okay, you might like them a little bit or not very much, but we try to do them with taste. But what we want is for them to be the same quality and design as non-recycled goods. I love this slide because when people see it, they think, oh, yeah, flip-flop, whatever. Flip-flops are flip-flop or flip-flop. But this flip-flop took us two years to create. We uh, worked alongside a technical center, technological center for footwear in the Rioja. It uses old tires. And where you see it now, it's received some several awards in the footwear industry because it's the base, the sole, is made out of old tires that squash together. And it's very uh, tough. It doesn't need any coagulants, additives, or glue in it. These are just small things that, okay, it's a common kind of a design, something you've seen everywhere. You've probably all got flip-flops at home. But what we try to do is to make it as sustainable as possible and try to get our customers to really want it, to value what they're buying. 
how how much do you think these w would cost? I, you, people, I mean, somebody might say to us, oh, I can get a flip flop for four ninety nine. Well, that doesn't. This one doesn't cost forty nine. Just to let you know that. What about uh, coffee grounds? These are some of the things that we do with nylon, uh, with um, outerwear, and then the things that we do with cotton. This cotton that I'm wearing is made out of recycled cotton, and it allows us to have a cotton uh, product that makes people aware of what they're wearing, that they want to share what they're wearing in their um, social networks. They want to be part of the change. That's what we're trying to do this is equivalences this is how we make people more aware i this uh, jacket is the same as 70 plastic bottles we do have a problem with labels because they're very long labels and design people don't like that we use uh, very long labels but we want to make sure that people know that what they're wearing has got 30 percent recycled cotton recycled polyester or what we're missing is uh, uh, raw cotton we want this kind of information to appear on our garments. Maybe people don't look at it, but people want it. They need to know that. Here are some of the benefits of working with recycled materials. We're hoping to help in the fight against climate change. We reduce water consumption, especially with the environmentally friendly cotton. If you want to buy something that's out of raw cotton, it can actually uh, use 2,700 litres of water. We prevent marine pollution and we use fewer natural sources, which has been our ultimate objective right from the word go. And this is something else that we started in 2012. So we're now seven years up and running as a, f a fashion brand. And we're now we're thinking of uh, doing things new because it's not just a matter of making recycled materials. But how do we go about making these recycled materials? What are we doing with everything that we've got? Are we doing things properly or not? And that's when we started uh, deciding that we need to be sustainability in the whole of our chain. We needed to be innovative at all times, and we needed to have tip-top design. If we're not fashionable, there's no point in our existing. We needed to work on environmental accountability. I might wear a recycled cotton t-shirt. It's cotton, no water's been used in producing it. But if I dye it afterwards with contaminant dyes, polluting dyes uh, from a company that hasn't, uh, that doesn't manage its waste uh, correctly and they provide us with the dyes, maybe mm, it's a, it doesn't matter that it's made out of recycled cotton. We've lost a lot of other things. So we need to, to work on all our stages and then our corporate social responsibility. This is something which textile industry is very, very important for the textile industry, like who makes your clothes? Are the people that are making them uh, child labor? Are they being paid fair wages? So we decided to work on all of that. That's what we call corporate responsibility or social accountability. Here you can see the team. There's only 35 of us, but we're growing. And we're concerned about that as well because we're worried about how our suppliers work. And whether they work in Asia. We don't have a problem with them working in Asia, but we need to know how they're working. And those are our values. It fits in with the title of this section of the Congress. You probably can share some of these values. They're very common in many companies, and they're very common and when we talk about values, personal values, we want people who, who are consistent, coherent with what they say. They walk that talk, they're committed, committed to society, they have some kind of a pledge with their customer, with the society, with their interest groups. And something else that's very important for us in the um, eco and the sustainable fashion sector is the fact that we're transparent. That makes us different. Now that is as much information as possible. Sometimes we're a little less proactive than we'd like to be, and sometimes uh, customers come and send us mails and say, and we get lots of them, that ask us exactly uh, about a jacket that they bought in 2012 and they want to know where it was made. These kind of customers, customers that are very demanding and they need to find a response. These are the, some of the certifications that we've been awarded recently. We've got the B Corp certification 
We're very proud of that. I don't know if you know about the B Corp movement. What it, it says and what it does, and I think it's a great claim, that they're not the best companies in the world, but we're the best companies for the world. And that's what we're trying to become. We've also been given the Global Recycled Standard, which is, allows us to trace our recycling. Because at the moment, nothing is regulated. I could send a T-shirt and say it's recycled cotton. But that I don't have to say what sort of a percentage it's recycled. And it might be 20% or 80%. You don't have to say. There's no regulation surrounding that. But that will increase. It's round the corner. If you want to put it on a garment that you, you've got uh, recycling, and if you've got this uh, uh, standard, then you also know that it's uh, properly recycled. Another thing that we're interested in is the sustainable uh, SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. Because they all look very nice when you project them, these SDGs, but you need to make them something real. We need to be able to measure them. Have we improved? We need to identify with some of them. Maybe we can't identify with all of them, but some of them, surely. Maybe we can work on one, two, several of them. This is something that we're working on in the company. Responsible production and consumption, which is part of our DNA. Climate action. Life below water, which is something very important for us. Biodiversity, life on Earth, and something that for us is is fundamental, which is alliances, because at the end, we're an SME. There are only 35 workers in Madrid, unfortunately. There's a movement in the textile world. There's a movement in the waste uh, movement and then the business movement. That, and we're trying to join these groups as much as we can to learn from them. So Partnership for the Goals is 17. And I'm going to just briefly tell you a little bit about uh, the Upcycling the Oceans project which is a basically a waste collection project. Basically, we collect uh, marine rubbish from the ocean and upcycle it. It's not easy, but we've managed to make some garments out of this rubbish. As I'm very stuck for time, I just wanted to show you this is some of the main results. We're doing this in Spain and also in Thailand. And this is the final slide, by the way. This is one of the products that we make, because I'm coming back to the beginning, which is if we don't like fashion, because actually we're a fashion company, then we're not an NGO, we're not a, a sustainability we're not a company, we don't offer consultancy advice or, or on sustainability. So you need to make things, and this is what we make, these uh, trainers that I'm wearing. But what's interesting is that people can see it. They might like it. They might feel great on it. They need to be comfortable. They need to be lasting, and they need to be quality. And with that, I finish. Thank you so much.